right there, I think. Yeah, not bad. Chances are that you're just getting started in your filmmaking career and you have absolutely no budget to shoot the type of music videos that you're wanting to shoot. In this video, I'm going to break down from concept to post-production on how I was able to make this small budget music video happen for artist Mokita. I'm super grateful that Mokita trusted me to direct this music video since now I'm primarily a DP, but he wanted me to direct this video for him and gave me the freedom to kind of go with my ideas. So one of the first things that I did when I received this song was listen to it at least 20 times, you know. Um, I wanted to listen to the lyrics, to the beat, just kind of get an overall vibe of how the song made me feel and also just jot down some of the ideas that came to mind. What are some visuals that just come to mind when I'm listening to the words, to the beat, and kind of the message of the song. So some of the themes that came to mind, you know, more on the obvious side were loneliness, you know, sadness, and then during the choruses, it sounded more hopeful, you know, it pushed the idea of like bravery and some positivity. So from there, I went and did a deep dive on the artist. You know, I wanted to check out their socials, their Instagram. I wanted to see how many music videos they'd done before. Um, just to kind of get a gauge for like what their past work or past music videos look like, what their previous songs look like, you know. It definitely helps when they don't have as many uh, videos out there so you kind of feel a little bit better that you can add value to their overall branding and you know just kind of put your own little twist or taste into the video and to also just show off your skill set. After checking out some of Mokita's you know past music I wanted to see some of the other related artists that come up on YouTube or Spotify so you know I go and do a deep dive on them I go watch their music videos you know take a few notes obviously I don't want to copy every single artist that's out there and don't want to take all their style but um, I just want to see kind of get a gauge for what other artists are doing that are making similar type of music while I'm doing research on the other artists you know I'm going through my own personal list of directors and DPs that I look up to and try to see if I can pull inspiration from their work because, you know, I look up to them, I aspire to be like them, create work, you know, that's kind of up to the quality they've set. So I continue my deep dive on, you know, also Pinterest, pulling out images, like pulling references from movies or just like interesting lighting setups that I saw people implement into their photography and take all those things and put them onto a treatment. You know, a treatment is kind of what you need to do to pitch a music video. That's kind of the official way of selling your idea to the label or to the artist and get them to trust you to bring that vision to life. When you don't have a budget for a music video, you know, you just have to kind of put your head down and just do a lot more research on ideas that you can incorporate without spending a lot of your own personal money or the project's money to kind of make that vision come to life. I mean, now more than ever, there are more filmmakers out there making BTS content on their music videos, directors talking about the treatments and how their ideas came to life. So it just means that you have to do a little bit more research, try to figure out what ideas are out there that you can kind of bring to life with Without spending a ton of money. I didn't want to use like any of that cheesy transition effects or shooting locations that just didn't seem authentic to the song so I had to kind of buckle down do more research and also go scout a ton around the city I live in right now in Nashville and find you know unique looking locations that would fit the music video. Now in regards to the treatment um, since this was going to be more of like a run and gun type of shoot and the budget was small, you know, I kind of consider that as a performance video. So when you're looking over the treatment, you know, I didn't do like a full on treatment, like a, you know, 12 to 15 page concept idea with scenes broken down, you know, I just kind of pitched like basically like a mood board and broke down kind of how we were going to go about shooting the scenes that I had in mind. I also did like a page full of images, kind of references that kind of represented the the final product and the look of the video, you know, what the color grading was going to look like. I took that and pitched it to the artist and, and his management and luckily they were super stoked on it, they felt really good about it and gave me the thumbs up to go and make it happen. For this music video, I went with a slightly more expressionistic style and less naturalistic. You know, due to not having as big of a budget um, and having to shoot 
in public locations. I just thought it would be more interesting to add in more colorful lights or just kind of use the surrounding, you know, lighting that is available instead of trying to go for a more naturalistic look, which a lot of times actually takes more budget to do because you just need more light sources that can you know, recreate that natural look in camera. To me at the time, you know, expressionistic meant just doing more colorful lighting and naturalistic kind of meant that shoot in natural light during the day or diffuse the light or something like that. I guess to me at the time, the word expressionistic meant, you know, trying more colorful lighting, kind of leaning in into a certain color that I wanted to highlight in the video, even though it didn't feel like it was coming from a natural source or you know the scenes were lit in a natural way so for the music video i kind of decided to lean more into the color red you know red being the color of love and kind of establishing the feeling of heartbrokenness and loneliness wow mika you put a lot of thought into this video man great job <laughs> sarcasm aside once i got the thumbs up i had to go figure out some of the logistical things i had to deal with which was finding a car because I wanted to shoot with a cool vintage car, um, finding the locations and also just kind of giving a, some general references on what I wanted the styling or his outfit to look like, I guess. Okay, I just wanted to briefly talk about the budget on this music video. I know the title of this music video is a zero dollar music video budget. Even though I had a small bit of budget to kind of put towards rentals and um, some of the other things that I needed for the shoot, Overall, I personally ended up not making, I made very little money after spending, you know, days of editing and also kind of bringing it together, pitching the idea and all that stuff. I considered this as a zero dollar music video budget because I didn't make any money out of it. Um, so I hope this kind of clarifies the whole zero budget thing. I'm not trying to fake it or lie to you guys, just wanted to be honest. There was a little bit of budget. I think the overall music video budget was $2,000. Uh, I had to use this money to rent a car for a full day. I had to you know, get some of the clothing that Mokita needed. Um, I had to rent some light gear and some other supplies that I needed for the shoot. So I think after all expenses paid, I think there's $500 left. You know, working on this video, spending four to five days on it from start to finish, and also using a lot of my own personal gear and not char charging rent for it. You know, I didn't really make money. After you pay your taxes on whatever's left, there's not really, <laughs> you know, anything left to be put in the pocket. You know, I can maybe go fill up my gas tank with it. You know, I just consider this project to be as a portfolio piece and just wanted to get back in my directing chops from, I guess, back in the day. Just wanted to kind of keep practicing, directing, communicating, because it's a completely different skill set than, you know, DPing and only focusing on camera and lighting and all that stuff. So after the thumbs up was given on the treatment, you know, I had to go and scout a handful of public spaces here in Nashville, which is, you know, something challenging to do when you live in a city similar to Nashville, where there's just not, in my opinion, as many cool architectural buildings or landscapes or interesting ideas that kind of compete you know up to things you may see in music videos in LA or New York or in UK or just like you know other cool locations around the world you know during the scouting I was able to find some similarly cool alleyways in the downtown area in Nashville that felt a little bit more kind of like urban you know kind of street New York alleyway vibes and then I found a public park you know Percy Priest is like a public park here in Nashville so I just thought it'd be cool to have him you know kind of maybe laying on his side and performing the song while the water was just kind of hitting him so I guess those were the two major locations I had to lock down you know I also had a bunch of driving shots that I had to do with him so so I kind of came up with this jerry rig <laughs> mount that I would put inside the car and kind of hang my camera upside down and shoot some performance stuff with him. But now let's do a breakdown of how the shoot actually went. The entire shoot took about eight hours from start to finish. The camera that I shot this music video with was my friend's uh, GH5S that I kind of used a bunch of Promist and star filters to kind of soften the image and also lean into more of the expressionistic look that I was kind of going for. And I got these filters right here. You know, I got my star filter. You can kind of see what that's doing to my face. Plus the Promist. 
yeah, that was kind of the vibe I was going for. But these two little filters that I got on Amazon just kind of helped me get closer to the look that I was going for. At the time I had my Ronin S to kind of stabilize a lot of the moving performance shots and also use the barrel roll function that I absolutely love because that type of camera movement, you know, you only see in higher end films, music videos, commercials, and it's just crazy that now we're able to do some cool camera moves just using a small, you know, fairly affordable stabilizer. Since this was a super low budget music video, I couldn't afford any crew or help. I had my lovely wife with me that assisted me uh, because I had to spend money on other things and really couldn't have a gaffer or a, you know camera assistant that would help me move the camera and all that stuff. I just had to kind of take care of everything. Very lean, very lean crew. You know, the goal was to just shoot as much as I can and just shoot as many angles as I could and just kind of see how it would come together in post. You know, again, I saw this sort of as a little bit of a performance video more kind of leaning more on the performance video side than a music video. So I feel like getting as many performances was key to making this video interesting and engaging. You know, I didn't want to just have three setups the entire video, but maybe four or five or just push for some extra b-roll that I could chop into the video and keep it interesting. I think the direction that I took with the camera movement and the expressionistic look was just the right fit for the video. All right, now let's break down the scenes and how I was able to go about shooting those. Let's start with the alleyway scene. I positioned the car towards kind of the entrance of the alley right next to a parking garage light, you know, so we can have just some ambient light coming in through the windows of the car and maybe just add a little bit more depth of field with the alleyway being super long. You know, there was there's some other lights kind of down the alleyway. So I just thought it would make sense to kind of have a natural kind of light coming in from the side of the car. I shot a series of different moments with Mokita being in the car and performing, kind of looking around, getting some bureau moments. And then I also had him sitting in front of the car, walking around the car, walking away from the car. Uh, just trying to piece together whatever type of story I could just from that one setup. So there was light coming in from, you know, the side of the parking garage entrance. And then I also purchased these $15 LED light strips from Amazon that I just plugged into one of my batteries. And those kind of helped bring in a little bit more light into the car. You know, I, I turned the headlights on, had my star filter and pro mist just to kind of add uh, maybe a backlight when he's sitting in front of the car and just keep that interesting. So those are just kind of some of the tricks that I pulled while, you know, we were shooting in that alleyway scene. Next up we have the lake slash water scene. For the lake scenes, we had to drive across the city, you know, pack up our stuff to where the water scene was going to happen. I shot a series of shots of, you know, Mokita kind of still before getting in the water, you know, him performing to the camera. And I also had my one LED strip light that was RGB and I used the red, you know, color on there to kind of throw that splash of red on him and just get some more performance scenes. They're, you know, it's pitch dark. We're in the middle of like, you know, West Na East Nashville and I just had that one light to use. So, you know, you just kind of lean into it at that moment and just try to make the most of what you're able to shoot. I knew that I definitely wanted that performance scene of him kind of laying on his side and performing while the water's hitting him. But before doing any of that, I made sure to get some, you know, solid performance shots of him sitting in the water before getting, you know, the top part of his body wet. And then after that, kind of lean more into the more soaked up type of performance scenes. You know, ideally in an alternate universe, if I had, you know, a bigger budget for this music video, I would try to replicate something similar to this in studio and just kind of focus more on the lighting, you know, have a budget, have a crew that can kind of bring this vision to life. With this being a zero dollar budget to me type of music video, you just kind of lean into it. And when you're in the moment, you just kind of get creative with what you're given. The way I was actually able to power my little LED strip was through this D-Tap to AC power um, little box that I just bought from B&H. And that kind of saved my butt. You know, I had a V-mount battery that held 
a pretty decent charge um, when it came to lighting the LED strip. So I would plug it in, kind of use that on a C stand, splashing some red on the artist. If you do a lot of run and gun shooting and don't have access to you know electricity, if you're shooting out in nature, I definitely encourage you guys to grab one of these. So I just have the link in the description for you to check it out. Okay, sweet. Now let's jump into the post-production process for this video. You know, by the time I jumped into shooting this video, I already had an idea of what the video was going to look like based on what I had pitched. So I wanted to kind of have a more filmic look and work off of the Pro Mist and Star Filter look that I had baked into the footage. You know, I use some of my own LUTs that I have available to kind of make that filmic look come to life. I also added some, you know, 60 millimeter grain and some film light leaks that kind of help with the transitioning between the looks. If you want some of those assets, definitely encourage you to go to my friend Ezra Cohen's uh, website and snagging some of those because he has for sure the best quality film grain out there. After a couple of revisions, you know, adding title screens and making the video, you know, an aspect ratio of four by three, I just thought that's what looked cool. Uh, the artists, you know, really liked the final product and super stoked on how it turned out. So I was super glad I was able to work on this project and, you know, make that vision come to life. I really had a great time doing this music video because it just kind of brought me back to my roots of like just a one man band, run and gun type of shoot. I'm thankful that there were like 50 people on set from label or management you know trying to insert their opinion into every shot and I just kind of had the freedom to go along with what I thought was cool or looked cool. I think as of now there's like a hundred thousand views on the video which is awesome. I'm super stoked. You know seeing results like that really makes me happy and makes me feel confident that I can create something and contribute to the world that doesn't just you know go away in a matter of few hours after it's posted but you know can last on a platform like youtube and just lead to more you know things for the artist and also for myself to quickly recap on i guess some of the things that i touched on when it comes to shooting a low budget music video you know you have to do a lot of research and pull a lot of references from things that you've seen in the past that you're inspired by and also think is realistic to put into this music video within the budget you're given. You have to get creative with the gear that you own and you know if there are some shots that you need a specific type of gear or light you know you need to ask for favors from other filmmaker friends. If you do that you know make sure that you pay them back in money you know, do a trade with them with your gear or even giving up your time in return, you know, because everyone's here to help each other out. You know, we all want to succeed. We want to grow. So that's something you have to do sometimes to kind of make your vision come to life. When you don't have a budget to rent a location or a studio space or build a set, you know, you just have to get a new car, drive around the city and find the most unique looking places that aren't dingy or scary or you know kind of put you in a vulnerable position. The locations that you shoot in are such a key part of your video looking good. So you have to invest some time and some gas money to go around and find those places. Low budget music videos can be done. It's not impossible. You're capable of doing it. You just have to get creative with your resources and just make the best use of them. If you enjoyed watching this video, go check my other videos and tutorials and subscribe. If you thought this advice was helpful, like and comment below some of the low budget tactics that you've used in the past and I would love to hear back from you. And if you're a fellow filmmaker, I have some free filmmaking assets link down in the description. Go ahead and download them, no strings attached. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace out. Thank you.